Hello, friends, and welcome. It's Cellar Chats. We're talking the weekly wine flights. Surprise, surprise. I mean, if you stumbled upon this, maybe you didn't know that, but anybody else has been here before. Uh, this week, you know, despite that it's slightly gloomy right now, uh, we, I think we are going to be squeezing out the last little touches of summer weather here on the coast. It does feel like fall weather maybe is officially going to set in, but for the next few days, it's going to be still like in the 80s and mostly sunny, although there is some rain tomorrow. Yeah, you didn't know this was a weather forecast, did you? Um, but it's looking like a really lovely weekend as far as temperature-wise goes. And next week, it's going to be a little more fall-esque. So we thought we would kind of lean into that, squeeze out those last drops with some summery style wines um, from specifically from the Santa Barbara area. So we're going to kick off the flight this week with Railsback Foray, their Le Rascas. Uh, we actually did this on the uh, uh, Blooms and Bottles event over the weekend and it was a real standout for Celeste and I. So we we're like, hey, let's put it on the flight this week. That wine was amazing. Ludi Chenin Blanc, always a favorite. We also featured that over the weekend, but again, always a standout wine. And then kind of a new, new something we've never done before, Landa Saints Merlot. Um, and you know, I just don't think Merlot gets enough love. So, you know, it never hurts to do that. And, you know, Santa Barbara, although well known for wine, I think now, I mean, they always have been, but like, it's really been kind of a big focus for so many people lately. They're maybe not as well known for Bordeaux varieties, um, but there's some pockets that really do it well. So let's kick off. Again, Rails Back for A. Slow connection. Um, huh, no longer slow connection. Rails Back for A. So this is a, a joint project between uh, Lyle and Eric Railsback, two just really dominant, amazing human beings in the world of wine. Um, they both kind of worked in their respective fields. You know, Lyle spent a lot of time on the importer side working for the the incredible Kermit Lynch portfolio for near a decade. Um, and Eric has bounced around doing basically, you name it, he crushed it. He worked in restaurants, working on the floor. He was an RN74 in San Francisco, really famous wine restaurants. Um, you know, he co-created a wine project called Lou D. He was a partner in like a wine bar. Um, and he's now a partner in, I think he's a partner in a distribution business in California. He's a partner in this. And then I think he's maybe a partner in um, Slow Connection again, waiting for it to catch up. I think he's a partner in Verve Wine with Dustin Wilson, um, kind of a, a small partner, I think. I, I don't actually know, but I, I think he has something to do with that. Anyways, this is really his baby. Him and his brother started this, and this was the wine they started the project with, um, the Le Rascas Rosé. Um, and this wine is really like a, what's, how do I put it? Um, in, in, in many ways, it's, it's, it's a big ode to Domaine Tempier and specifically Lulu Perrault. Um, who was the, you know, matriarch of the Domaine Tempier, you know, famous for her cooking and her hospitality. They make, uh, for those of you who don't know Tempier, one of the most famous sought after collected roses of Provence. They're based in Bandol. Um, and the label features uh, rockfish or scorpion fish um, in French, Les Rascas, uh, which Lulu always claimed that the a proper Provençal Bouillabaisse was not correct if it didn't have rockfish in it. Um, so an extra little nod to them. So classic style, like Provence style rosé coming from California. Um, and this wine is just drinking beautifully. A uh, little bit of like white raspberries, touch of peach, mineral, citrus, vibrancy. Really good like character. I mean, look at the color of that. That is pitch perfect what you look for in classic like Provence inspired or Provence rosés. Mm. Oh, wow. I mean, excellent, excellent wine. So vibrant, so fresh. All the things you could possibly ever want from a great summertime rosé. But the, the other thing I like about this wine, and, and like Tempier in many ways, this does not drink like Tempier. Don't, don't you know, get me wrong here. But you can tell the influence is there. 
Um, the wine is aged in neutral oak, so it's got some more texture. It's got complexity, and this is a wine that really stands up to food. Um, so while you could easily drink this sitting outside on an 80 degree, 80 degree October day, which apparently those are things now, um, this would be a perfect rosé for like, you know, holiday meals or going into like harvest season, something with a little like substantial like character and flavorful, but such a great wine. Mm. Again, a little bit of a glare here. That is Railsback Frey, their 2022 Les Rascas Rosé. Just lovely, lovely stuff. All right, moving into the next wine today. This is Ludi Chenin Blanc from the saint -Yanez. So this was a project that Eric had been involved with previously. Um, he's no longer part of it, as far as I know. Um, but the head runner here is Justin Willett from Tyler Winery. Um, and slow connection, just in case you're wondering why I stopped talking. Oh, uh, okay. So connection's back up and running. I need to film from a different angle. Um, so, um, Lou D really focused on the Loire Valley grape varieties or primarily focused on varieties that you would find throughout the Loire Valley. Chenin Blanc, Sauvignon Blanc, Cabernet Franc. Um, they did some Gamay for a while. Um, <clears throat> And they do a really lovely melon, which is what you would find in uh, Muscadet, although they're, they're going through a little bit of a drought on that one. They're waiting for more to come into, uh, more grapevines to come into season before they can start making that wine again. But again, just a really amazing value driven. Um, their Chenin Blanc has been on the list here at Second Glass for at least three years. It's always been a go-to. It over delivers just tons of texture and really great fruit. And it's got like a little, more, little bit more of like a medium body characteristic to it. It's kind of like a, it still works for that summertime weather, but maybe we're, we're inching towards fall. Maybe it's getting a little cooler at night. You know, this is more towards the later in the evening. Um, I always get this really like beautiful kind of like orange marmalade type character to this wine. It's just so texturally gorgeous and full of flavor and complexity. <coughs> Mm. Sorry, I was slightly distracted. There was a random human person standing outside the window. I'm not really sure what they were doing because the restaurant is not open yet because it's, you know, noon. Anyways, wow, great wine. A little bit of floral characteristic on the back end, which I really love. Um, that isn't, I, had, I don't think I've ever noticed that before, but it could just be like this bottle like or this wine really coming into its own. I want to say this is... Yeah, 2021, so we're, <coughs> excuse me, two years out of vintage, um, so a little more complexity and a little more character coming out in the wine, so pretty. Mm. But again, Ludi, Chenin Blanc, it's great, not much else to say, it's excellent. All right, moving into Land of Saints, um... So this is their Merlot, and you know what? Merlot deserves a little love, let's be honest. Uh, it is still reeling from the death blow that it was basically given between the 90s over saturation of boring, jammy, you know, indiscernible Merlot coming out of California and then, you know, the, the cherry on the top, the, the ever-classic line from the movie Sideways, which was just the nail in the coffin for this thing. Um, I mean, just so everybody knows, Merlot was already on the downturn by the time that movie came out. But it really didn't help it. Um, so this is the Land of Saints. This is uh, Angela Osborne and her husband and uh, a business partner of theirs started this little project a handful of years ago really based on good value wines, true of basically produced with, you know, minimal intervention, you know, all of the, checking all the boxes, you know, low SO2, no other additives, you know, not messing around, but really trying to showcase the 
wealth of quality and diversity available in Santa Barbara while also making wines that are fairly affordable, which is not an easy thing to do in California ever. Um, and it just keeps getting harder and harder. Um, and I really love that they do a straight Merlot um, for so many reasons. I think Merlot is very delicious, so drinkable. And there's a reason that Merlot was one of the top selling wines in the early 90s. Like if, if you were around then and you were in restaurants or you went to restaurants, you did not go out without seeing tons of Merlot because that was the best selling wine, red wine you could get. Like that's what everybody wanted. Um, and, and really what drove that is that, you know, Cabernet kind of gets all of the credit for being like the, the king of red wines from Bordeaux. It's structured, it's complex, it ages. Merlot can do all of those things too. But what Merlot has that Cabernet doesn't is an approachability and like a juicy like fruit character that is just undeniably enjoyable. Um, so I just want more people to give it a go and try it out. Um, so this comes from Santa Barbara. I actually think this comes primarily from Happy Canyon, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that's where, so Happy Canyon is kind of inland from the coast in Santa Barbara. Um, and it's one of the several pockets that really does well with Bordeaux style varieties because it's a little warmer. Um, you know, get out towards the coast. It's very cool, very, you know, Pacific influenced. Um, and Bordeaux varieties, they need some warmth. They need to ripen. They need to have a little bit of heat. Um, so they don't always do so well closer to the coast, but as you get further inland, things like Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon and Sauvignon Blanc and things that you would find in Bordeaux or even Napa start to do a lot better than Pinot and Syrah and Chardonnay and things like that. Um, so on the nose, oh wow, really pretty like blackberry plum. There is a juiciness to this wine. It's done in all neutral oak. Um, there is, I think about 5% Cabernet Sauvignon blended in here. So just a little structure, a little depth, a little color. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So pleasing. So delicious. A little like, it's a little bit of spice. There's this absolutely gorgeous kind of like macerated like blackberry like jam not like sweet like jam but like that texture and that full flavored like characteristic that you get from like a jam or a preserve man that wine is great okay all right quick wrap up we'll get i'll get out of your hair and we'll move on again this week's flight all about squeezing out last drops of summer as again it continues to be gloomy outside but it is like 80 degrees um kicking off the flights this week rails back for a Le Rascasse Rosé from saint -Yanez. then bouncing over to Ludi Chenin Blanc, also from saint -Yanez. and then rounding out the tasting with Land of Saints Merlot from Santa Barbara County, but I'm pretty sure most of it comes from Happy Canyon. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting local. Get out there, have some great food, have some great drinks, share with your friends, share with your family. Be safe, be well. See you next week.